with the Russians being correct in that 2023 was the last year of US hegemony, or however you pronounce that, overlording of the world. It was the end. So RIP to American muscle in that it overlord the world in 2023. Is it the end of the US military and their might? No. But US hegemony, US policing world, that ended in 2023, it really did. And it probably ended before that. But yes, last year, I believe it was the nails in the coffin. That's it. It's the end of the road for the uh, for Washington and its politicking over the world. It's the year that US the US Empire died. It's it's finished. It's it will never come back. It's gone. Uh, America was a great and still is a great country as it was designated in the late seventeen hundreds as it became independent. As was the spirit of the French and Maltesers liberating it at the Battle of Chesapeake. So, that's the spirit of America. It always has been and should always be. America should not have to be this global cop. That's not its role. That's not who it is. It's better when it does things the original way, how it always done things. And it lasts 70, 80 years isn't really how it's always done things. It's just been a slow demise. The more it involves itself with other people's shit, the more it became embroiled in that shit and brought itself to shit. Like, for instance, having to win in the Ukraine means I have to spend another $500 billion. That's a lot of money. So when you get yourself stuck in all this garbage, you uh, have to suffer the consequences financially. Now, you could argue that, okay, okay then, genius. If we don't have the political influence around the world, well, we're not going to be this global empire in terms of, not global empire, we're not going to be this economic juggernaut, are we? We're going to lose, lose, lose. Well, that's just not true. There are numerous ways to profit without being a global uh, military influencer. And Malta, for instance, Malta seems to be the greatest example of all. It just, in a matter of 10 years, it turned its GDP from like, 12 or 13 billion dollars per annum to 30. What country does that? That's almost triple in 10 years. <laughs> That's growth on growth on growth. And the Maltese, have you seen their navy? There's a few patrol boats. They don't go around the wall policing everybody. They just, they know how to pull a few strings. As you should if you're in a nation state. It's, there's no crime in that. That's what you should be doing as a nation state, knowing how to pull strings. That's why you're there. That's why the government's formed. So it can pull strings to make the economy function. That's the whole idea of international trade, international everything. Point is, Russians are right. It's the year that American military governance, if you want to put it, died in the arse. And it's the end of the road. Now, what that means for us, it would be absolutely suicidal for white Australians, the typical white Australian fringe who thinks they're pulling all the strings in the background. It would be outright suicidal for them to get in the way of all Australians who have nothing to do with them, to get in the way of all Australians uniting, not under some sort of uh, a civil takeover pretense. That's just garbage. There's no takeover. There's no nothing. It's just Australia's just Australia. But it would be suicidal for them to try to stop the confidence and motivatedness of all other Australians uh, forwarding their agenda, uh, particularly non white persons. In other words, uh, there is no inferiority in any non-white persons in Australia. And in other words, white superiority dies in the arse. There is no such thing anymore. It's just a fact, it's a global fact now. And for them to push that wagon any further would be to push it the wrong way and all the TNT in that wagon would blow everything to pieces. 
it's not a good look it's not a good idea for them to do that so this is the golden opportunity for all australians to take advantage of that aren't particularly white or have that uh, classical whatever you want to fucking call it uh anglo politic political heritage and uh, place in the elite circle that apparently calls all the shots in the background in Australia. That that ends with American hegemony because there's no there's nothing else for it to stand on. It can only depend on itself. Our nation can only depend on itself in other words and how we deal with the rest of the world. And if white Australians push their agenda any further in secret in the background, well their entire society, their entire Everything they've ever built, everything they think is theirs, it just collapses and dies in the ass. So, with American hegemony dying, so does anything, so does the notion of white privilege, which is what I'm really getting to. White anything, it's just bye bye, it, it's finished. There is no Anglo or white superiority, which is what apparently got cancelled in the 40s or 50s, but really never went anywhere. It was just, in some respect, a great front. And that would be... It, it's, it's good for people to keep that in mind. To keep it in mind to keep in mind that it's absolutely insane. Absolutely self-destructive for any uh, white Australian, not power, dynamic in the background to prevent other Australians from uh, stamping their place in this country's history which is rightfully theirs because they are Australian uh, so gone are the white privileged politicking days all the games they play all the false rules they put forward because that their place in Australia no matter how long they think they've been here can be summed as this false rules that's all that's ever got them anywhere. False rules for you, false rules for you, false rules for you. But at the bottom of those rules seem to always be something that benefits them. It's 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 fucking hilarious. Not many people can see through that, but you know, Maltese being Maltese, Maltese Australians, we can see straight through it because the British governed in Malta. So why would we see... In other words, why would we see absolutely what the British were doing in Malta? How the fuck can we see that here if this is just Australia? How can we see these British games that were played in Malta for nearly 200 years here if it's apparently not white Australia? So, yeah, no, it's gone of those days. And this is exactly when you can take, make your mark as an Australian. Now, whether you're from Africa and you've been here for 10 or 20 years, whether you're an Indian and you're second or third generation, it doesn't matter who you are. This is your Australia. And this is our culture, this is what we do. It's been like that for over 200 years, that doesn't change. But it, this is your chance to do whatever it is you do, to make your mark. And there's no white Australian dynamic can, that can get in, the way with, get in the way of that now, unless they're outright suicidal and stupid. Because American hegemony going means they've got, no, they've got nothing to stand on, they've got no one to hide behind. Classically, white Australians love hiding behind American back. It's actually true. I've never admitted it publicly. I'm not a part of that dynamic, that sniffs arsehole or licks arsehole. I'm just an Australian, but you do have the white Australians who were in positions of importance, governing, uh, government positions, military positions. Classically, they do, uh, the Americans do say, you know, please lick my ass, and the, they would naturally say, oh, at what angle, sir? we have been licking American ass for a long time and with no American hegemony there's no ass to lick we, it's that, that's it that that ass to lick is no, no longer available you have to depend on yourself and when that happens here you just have to look at the way our country runs the statistics how many white Australians actually exist and it's a lot less than you can think so anything that they would do to impede 
any Australian who was non-white just stamping their ground in what is their Australia would be completely suicidal. Okay, classically white Australians love to parade themselves on commercials and sports and try to be the is all and end all. We are everything. Look at us. Look at me. They actually are that fucking sick in the head. Uh, I've studied them back to front. Uh, it's one of the reasons I want nothing to do with that part of society, uh, the fame, the glory. It's it's a white joke. I want fucking nothing to do with it. Oh, what an embarrassment. What an embarrassment to my family story. To parade around with a bunch of fucking clowns who are cheating and do, playing all these political games and cracking down on heroic sportsmen using the law just because they make white people look bad. And that's the sickness that has gone on in our country for so long. and still does. I've got nothing to do with that. What a fucking... What a crock of shit. But now is the time to change all that for, for all the younger people and even myself. I'm fucking not that... I'm not exactly old. I'm not even close to old. But now is the time for all Australians to to seize on that opportunity as Australians. No, this is what we are. We are Australian. And we're going to seize on that. I'm going to seize on it next year by going to Malta, potentially, and joining their army. And being the biggest cunt alive. Because as soon as we become a republic, I'll come back here. And like I told you, sir. I'm not going to fucking join some fucking white man British fucking league. Get the fuck out of my face, you fucking unwashed cunt.